right, so the most important thing about this section right here, big star, you can't divide fractions. So does that mean we just can't do it? Oh. I thought we just got to skip this section. So what are we going to do? KFC, yes. So we are going to instead, so basically we can't divide, so we're going to turn all of them into multiplication. So yeah, if you want to think about your keep change flip, that's kind of a good way of saying it. Never heard it that way, but you're going to keep the first fraction. Oh wait, before we do any of this though, uh, we want to make sure that we turn all mixed numbers into improper fractions. So that's the very first thing that we have to do. You cannot do the process that Caleb said with a mixed number. All right. And again, if it's negative, don't worry about the negative. Just put the negative on one of the numbers, either to the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter which one. Okay? But then, as you said, we are going to keep the first fraction. We're going to change every single problem into multiplication. And as multiplication. And as Caleb said, we're going to do what? Flip the second fraction. What do we call flipping the second fraction? Any idea? If you flip a fraction, it's called finding its what? What? Yeah. So when you flip the fraction, you're finding a reciprocal. So if the directions say find the reciprocal, it means the same thing as you thinking about flipping. And then basically we do what? After we do this process of keep, change, flip, we, we multiply. We do what we did in the last section, right? Mm -hmm. So before we actually multiply, we can still do what? Simplify. In which directions can I simplify? Either diagonal or up and down. Now, this is really, really important. Do not try to simplify until after you do the change. You cannot try to simplify with the division part at the very beginning. And they're going to try to trick you. So they're going to give you some fractions that are diagonal to each other that you can simplify as a, the initial division problem. But you can't do that until you actually make your switch. And then at the end, we're going to multiply straight across again, right? And don't forget to do both the top and the bottom. Why can't they just make it the words to flip? I mean, why does that have to be the words? What's wrong with reciprocal? I mean, it's easier to say flip, but what's... Because flip was already um, used, and that could be, you know, like flapjacks or something. You could flip a coin. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be weird to say, I'm going to do a reciprocal on the trampoline? <laughs> <laughs> Have you two ever thought about going on the road together? <laughs> <laughs> you could be like Abbott and Costello or something. You probably don't even know who that is. No. Yeah. You two would be perfect for each other. Okay. So, let's look at some. Do you uh, remember uh, any time that I'm going to do a reciprocal and it's a whole number though? Make sure that you put it over one first and then do your trampoline flip, right? <laughs> okay? 
And then again, make sure that you turn everything into a an improper fraction first before you try to take your reciprocal. Okay? So let's try it out. One fourth divided by five sevenths. Do we remember what our little uh, symbol is called? Oh, it starts with an L. That's all I remember. Yeah. Wait, uh, the. Uh, what? I don't think so. What? I thought someone said it in our recites. Abbott over there. Do you want to be Abbott or do you want to be Abbott? What does that mean? Abbott and Costello. I, I would rather be the male instead of the girl. Take They're the both males. Male <laughs> name. Costello. Costello. Uh, Do you remember um, what uh, Easton Macklem and um, Zach Kraft did last year? Did they ever perform for you guys? No. Oh. Well, they did an Abbott and Costello uh, skit. Have you ever heard the famous skit, who's on first, what's on second? Oh, yeah. yeah That's yeah. Abbott and Kissel. Oh. And Zach and Easton did that last year. So we can't find it, ladies? I know I wrote it down. I wrote it down. What? Obulus. Obulus. What did you try telling me tonight? I saw. Yeah, I saw. It sounds close. No, it doesn't. All right, here we go. So... Again, do not look at this problem right here and think about reducing. I gotta first do my process. So as you said, we're gonna keep the first one. We're gonna change it to multiplication. Again, be careful with using an X because towards the end, we'll actually put in variables. All right, and then we're gonna take and flip my fraction. So again, every single problem might not include reducing. So then we're just gonna multiply, right? Multiply straight across the top, multiply straight across the bottom, and we get what? And then the very last thing that we should still do is look to reduce. Because maybe we missed something, or every once in a while, now I probably should, but every once in a while, you know, you just miss reducing or simplifying at the beginning, so you got to make sure that last number is simplified as much as possible. Otherwise, it's happening. No. Wait, ask Ed. No, no, it's, it's about this, it's about this. Okay. So, why do we need to divide fractions if we can't divide fractions, but we're just basically ending up multiplying the reciprocal? Right. But why? But you still have to divide some fractions. You just can't actually physically divide fractions. But how does that... You have to turn it into multiplication. But how does multiplication divide it? Shouldn't it be called multiplying? Well, because of your reciprocal. If you didn't flip it, then you're really not doing something different. Then you're just multiplying. But because you're flipping it, you're actually taking the problem and, and we're, in a sense, you're reversing the second part of it, right? Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand it. It should be called multiplying the reciprocal. Well, because if, if we, like you said, if we just went through and did multiplication to it right away, then we would have to have two different things. We wouldn't have to have multiplication and division. So there has to be something that changes. And basically, division, if you think about division, what are you doing? You're taking the top number divided by the bottom number in a fraction, right? But if that's how it's written as a multiplication, I want to do the opposite of it in a sense. So when I flip it over, I'm basically doing the opposite. Talk to Costello later, later, and he'll explain. Um, so, don't forget, we can do this with negative numbers. Don't let the negatives uh, complicate anything. So, realistically, if this was my original problem in the book, when I'm writing it on my piece of paper to do it for the homework, do I even have to write the negatives? Because if I notice that each one of them has a negative, two negatives are going to make my answer what? Positive, so do I really need to write them? Heck no, right? So again, here would be one example right here. If you start going really fast, 
You look at this problem right here, could I reduce right there? Yeah, right? So this is where you gotta be really, really careful and make sure that you convert it into multiplication before you do your reducing. So times, now we're going to just say negative six over five. And again, if you wanted to put the negative on the bottom, that doesn't matter, you could have wrote six over negative five. But now we're ready to do it, right? So my two and my five still don't, but my three and my six do. So we get one and two, and then we get what? Four fifths, and we already decided that the negatives were going to cancel each other out anyway, so we get four fifths for our answer. What if you reduce in its original form before you like flip them around? Then you're going to get the wrong answer. Let's do it. So if I do this right here, I would have two and three here. Are we going to get away with it sometimes? Probably. So we get negative one third times uh, three over negative five, right? What do we get now? Negative. One third. So it does make a difference, right? Every once in a while it might not make a difference, but just because of how the numbers matched up, but you're gonna definitely get a different different answer. Okay? Um, so then we can have a problem with mixed numbers. Four and two thirds divided by negative three and one ninth. So again, remember, first thing we want to do is turn them into improper fractions. Side note on that, remember when my mixed number is negative, when I'm turning it into an improper fraction, don't use that negative in that process. Because again, then you'll screw up your uh, improper fraction. Okay? So, what do we get here? 14 over, 14 over, three. 14 over 3, right? Always over my original. And then multiply or divide it by negative 28 over 9. Now, some of you are going to, because you um, want to get done with your assignment, I'm thinking about some people in this class. The other one's not here today. They're going to try to uh, do things all at one time, right? So what I'm saying is, some people are going to try to turn this into multiplication, flip it, and do your improper fraction all at one time. You know what I mean? Be careful of that, okay? Especially at the very beginning. Now it's probably doable, but just make sure you don't get going so fast that you make mistakes. Not that anybody would do that. What's my reciprocal? Now I'm going to put the negative on the bottom this time. Again, it doesn't matter where I put it. One negative just makes that whole fraction negative. Now I go through and I start simplifying, right? Now again, be careful so you understand how your uh, little chicken scratches really go. So in this case, I might actually put my negative 2 down there. Just so I know. But then I'm going to come back and I'm going to really cross everything out. And then I should end up with negative three halves. Agreed? Yeah, you put the negative on the top. Yeah. Doesn't matter where I put the negative. Okay. So I can put the negative on the top, on the bottom, or just on its own. All right. So, uh, next one. Four divided by four sevenths. Go. Try it. See what you get. Now I see uh, Mr. Uh, Kolbeck's got his calculator out. This is where we uh, stop using calculators for a while and start using uh, the thing between our ears. We like to call that a brain. I, I don't think I have one. Uh, Here. So now you might actually have to get that second brain cell working for this <laughs> Remember now, this one uh, we wanted to show because of the whole number. And we really want to show the next one or something like this. Or I'll show you another one in just a second. So, what do we get? Seven. Four over one times seven over four, right? So we got seven. Exactly right. So, last one. Unless you wanted to see more, but try this one by yourself. Seven and one third divided by five. 
Now this one's a little bit more, you just gotta stop for a second and think. But it still should be doable. Everybody get an answer? So again now, first things first, switch this to an improper, right? So we should have got 22 over 3. Divided by, remember this is 5 over 1. So then we should have got 22 over 3 times 1 over 5. And so, can I reduce anywhere? Doesn't look like it, right? So we end up with 22 over 15. How do we do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so then, obviously now, because we did this in multiplication with variables, we can do this with variables with division. Same process happens, though. Okay? So again, you cannot reduce until you turn it into multiplication. You cannot reduce until you turn it into multiplication. So, same process. Keep, change to multiplication, and we're flipping or taking our reciprocal. Now, I noticed on the quiz and stuff, this is where some of us struggled still with canceling out variables. Remember, if there's a variable on the top and a variable on the bottom, it automatically means that those two cancel each other out. So for instance, in this case, my y's are totally gone. And then I start canceling everything else. So what'd you have left over? Two x. I'm saying just x. Right? Because remember, I can always go up and down also, right? So I have two over two, but two on the top and two on the bottom cancel those two out also. So then if you start your problem with doing it diagonally, you can also do it? I can do it all the time, yep, in all the directions. That's what she was going to ask. So she said, yeah, we did it diagonally first. Is that, it doesn't just stop there. You can do it as many times as you want, up and down, left and right, or sorry, up and down in both diagonals. Okay? Let's try one more. X squared over 5 divided by AX over 2. Right? 1x from the bottom, 1x from the top. Nothing else can get canceled, right? So we should add 2x over 5a. Make sense? All right? Last thing. Up here, story problems. We love story problems. How many gallons of gas are needed to travel 78 and 3 fourths miles if a car gets 25 and a half miles per gallon? So this basically goes back and you're going to use this formula again, right? V equals RT. Anytime that we talk about distance, we're going to go back to that formula. So where does 78 and 3 fourths go in my formula? This is my distance. 78 and 3 fourths equals what is 25 and a half miles per gallon? That's my rate. So I'm looking for time, right? So then the first thing that I'm going to do is what? Convert it, right? Convert these into improper fractions. This one's pretty easy, right? This is 51 halves. This one's a little bit more complicated. 78 times four. Two, three, 28, and three is what? 31. So 315 over four. So now, think about this as your division problem, okay? 
So again, now we go back to way old school and solving equations. How do I get t all by itself? I'm going to divide both sides by 51 halves. Well, in this case, this is where I would take the time to rewrite the problem because normally when we did this, we would have put it underneath like this. Well, a lot of times we don't really think about a fraction divided by a fraction in that sense. We, we think about it as writing with that obelisk, right? So then we would have this, and then we could go and do our problem. 315 over 4 times 2 over 51. So obviously this is an easy one. Does 51 go into 315? No. So then that looks like it's our answer, right? So 315 over what? Oops. Over 2. Right? Is my T. So now, again, this is one time where you can use a decimal or a fraction or a mixed number. So what's 315 divided by 2? Somebody punch that in your head. What happens if you're 51? Oh, I had a 51 still. I thought that was something else. So we have what? 102. Thanks. Perfect. So then we still punch that into our calculator and we got our T for time. Okay. So 315 divided by 102. Uh, 3 and 9 or 3 point? I got 3.08825294. Close enough. 3.08. 3.08 what? Down. It's time, right? Hold up. We got an assignment. Write down the assignment before we all leave. We're going to have somebody write it down and then everybody else copy it. Remember, this is an hour though, not a gallon. You guys, anytime that you, I want to see that you're going to do time in gallons, let me know.